your man out of Japan, Jay Contra. We are going to the Kex in Hereford in England. We're crossing the border from Wales to England this time, and we're looking at a substantial selection of NES games and Mega Drive games. I'm really excited to show you what they have here, as well as the most expensive game here is $80. So what is it? You're gonna have to stay tuned. Hope you enjoyed the video. We've got a lot to look at. Lots of Game Boy games and more PlayStation games than I expected. So let's see here. Ooh, look at the condition of that Super Mario Land. Eight pounds. That's like, what, ten bucks? Ooh. And there on the right, we've got Pokemon Red going for, what is that, 20, like 25 bucks? Man, are the labels peeling off? That's in real rough shape. <laughs> that's definitely, by Japanese standards, I would say that's junk. And then, ooh, and then Fire Red. So what is the difference here? Why is Fire Red so much more expensive than the original Red? Is it because by the time the third generation came out, people had sort of moved elsewhere, so the sales were a bit lower? And then look at that copy of Yellow there on the right. They want someone to pay $26 for that copy of Yellow? Okay, sure. <laughs> And that copy of Fire Red, by the way, that is going for about $52. $52 for a copy of Fire Red. And look, like, look at these. Why are these all the same price? Why can't Kex price based on condition? Why would they expect someone to buy those crappy copies on the left and the right when they would, of course, of course, they would just go for the one in the center? And they could even upcharge. They could even charge like, you know, $40 for the good looking one. But they just have that consistent price. I don't know why. What do we see here? Ooh, we got some game gear. We've got Dr. Mario there on the left going for about $6. And Psychic World, one player game going for about $4. A couple Game Boy Advance games here. Super Mario Advance going for $15. And Wario Land 4 going for $13. Super Mario Advance, I have not played, actually. And then Golden Sun, one of my favorite RPGs. I love Golden Sun 1 and 2. I actually have the one for the DS, and I didn't really like the way that it began. But Golden Sun 1, great game, fantastic graphics. I think one of the better RPGs, not just for the Game Boy Advance, but one of the better RPGs out there. Ooh, yeah, wish it was in better condition, but if you could find one in good condition for $26, as it's going for here, you could actually get a lot of fun out of that game. And one of the coolest things, it was one of the first games that I ever experienced, actually one of the few that I've ever experienced, where you take your characters from Golden Sun, and you can actually move them to the sequel, to the point where when you're playing through the sequel, once you get your characters from the old game, because they're so leveled up, you just destroy demolish you destroy everything that's in your path when you're playing as your old characters and i remember the original way you can transfer your characters over was you connected your game boy advance to another game boy advance you had your original copy of golden sun and then you had golden sun 2 in the other game boy advance and that's how you could exchange the data but because i did not have two game boy advances at the time because i was in like you know 12 years old i had to write out a probably like four page a4 code that you then input you, you sort of like got the data from the original game you wrote the code down on a piece of paper and then you input that code into the golden sun 2 game it was the craziest system but it was worth it because you just you basically showed up with like level 99 characters in the sequel and you just oh so good so good Sonic Advance 2, by the way, going for $10. I'm sure it's fine. <laughs> but Golden Sun, amazing game. <laughs> uh, speaking of RPGs, wow, well, Final Fantasy VII, an original copy, going for $26. I think, wasn't there a time where Final Fantasy VII was expensive, but maybe it's actually kind of like dropped in price because of the of the remake? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. But uh, it's a fine game. And then Center Court Tennis, also known as Let's Smash, I'm pretty sure. In Japan, that's it's a PAL and Japanese exclusive. Did not come out in the United States. This is going for about $18. Wonder Boy 3, The Dragon's Trap. Bizarre, bizarre artwork. It was sort of one of those Mega Man-ish uh, artworks for what was sort of like an anime game back in Japan. That's going for, let's call it like $23. And then we've got Fear Effect Retro Helix by Eidos going for a, a similar 18 pounds. 
Um, it's like what I got to do my J contra math here. Let's let's call like twenty five bucks if you include the. Uh, although all of these, because of the way that VAT works or you know British sales tax works, all of these games include the price of tax. And then ooh, Zevius, Zevius going for twenty five pounds. That's like what thirty? Yeah, like thirty dollars. That's not bad. That's actually I think Zevius or no? I'm thinking of Zanac, uh, Nac Zanac or Zanac. I don't want to say Xanax. I don't know what the Japanese name is for this game. But Xenia is not bad. That's uh, pretty good. And then Tony Hawk Skateboarding going for $13. And then is that Crash Bandicoot 3 Warped going for $20. <laughs> and then Tony Hawk Pro Skater 2 going a bit more expensive, going for £25. We've got the Street Fighter Collection. I wonder what games are on that collection. That's going for £28. That's another you know $35, $40 game. Then we've got Spyro the Dragon, a Platinum Edition by Insomniac, going for $25. And then Soul Fighter. Haven't heard of Soul Fighter. Going for just $10. Ooh, Street Fighter 2 Collection. Going for $26. Interesting, interesting that Street Fighter originally came out for the Super Nintendo. And then even for the PlayStation, they're like, yeah, Street Fighter 2 was amazingly popular. Let's just put all of the versions of the game. So I'm assuming it's got, what, Turbo, New Challengers. And then, like, there was, like, what, Turbo 2 Maximum or whatever. <laughs> There's, like, four versions of Street Fighter 2 that came out. And I got, oh, man, I wonder if someone actually did buy all of those new. Because there was, even though Street Fighter 2, you know... A great game but it's like is there like a ton of game in there when you're playing it back in the, the early 1990s paying 70 dollars for each of those games you're probably spending what overall like 250 dollars if you're buying every game for on um, new in cartridge format or you could just buy the street fighter 2 collection which i'm sure was like what 40 dollars when it first came out probably uh we've got black hawk going for about wow, 38 pounds two copies though Going, that's about 50 bucks, now that I think about it. We've got Gradius there going for 25. Fester's Quest. <laughs> what was that, 10 pounds going for 13? Gauntlet 2 going for $10. Wow, lots of, I'm, I'm surprised. This actually has a lot of games, way more games than I would have suspected for many different systems. Drop Zone going for, what is that, 18 bucks, very nearly 20 a couple of Genesis games here, Batman, Lemmings. What's the most expensive game here? 18, and then what is that? Oh, Virtual Fighter Animation going for, what is that, for Game Gear? Wow, that's going for $26, okay. And then, oh, Champion. Speaking of Street Fighter 2, here's the Champion Edition going for 10 bucks. Wow. And then Defender of the Crown going for five pounds. Is it any good? Uh, someone in the comments, please let me know if Defender of the Crown is any good bunch of amiibos down there i am i am shocked that the amiibos have held their value what is that gta 2 wow local copy rockstar being british of course gta 2 going for 11 dollars there on the left and then capcom versus snk millennium fight 2000 what what oh no i'm thinking i said no sorry capcom versus snk 2 is the one that has one of the greatest songs uh one of the best soundtracks ever it's ridge racer Ridge Racer Type 4 going for $5. And then Time Crisis Project Titan. Time Crisis, it's okay, the original Time Crisis. I love, I love like Time Crisis 2 and 3. Great arcade shooters, fantastic. And I mean, when I say shooter, I mean you better get your light gun because God, oh my God, God help you if you are playing it using just a regular controller. What, cr original Crash Bandicoot. They really want like 35 bucks for Crash Bandicoot? I thought there would have been a mil like, you know, tens of millions of these games floating around. Maybe the PAL version's a bit slightly harder to find because there's not that many of them floating around. Not as many as the NTSC copies. And Tekken 3 going for a cool $13. Tekken 3, Tekken, uh, it's a, uh, I prefer Street Fighter myself. So why is Grand Theft Auto cheaper than Crash Bandicoot? Maybe because the original Grand Theft Autos, you know, they're like top down. Not exactly the same. They're going, this is going for like, what, $11? But hey, you can, I mean, you can fill out a good Grand Theft Auto collection here. Get the, get the original two games. Woo, here we go. Terminator 2, the arcade game. Going for $11. The number one arcade smash. Is that Menacer? Menager? I don't know. I, I, don't, I can't quite tell what that's supposed to be there. And then X-Men, two copies. Two. How lucky are we? 
that we've got two copies of X-Men Mutant Academy going for six dollars. And then Ghostbusters 2. Wow, Ghostbusters 2, you know, you could buy you could buy very nearly four copies of X-Men Mutant Academy for the same price as one Ghostbusters 2. <laughs> Is Ghostbusters 2 four times better than X-Men Mutant Academy? I'm not sure. And then Fear Effect by Eidos going for $13. Golden Axe 2. Wow, look at just look at look at the rippling muscles. Ooh, look at that, look at that guy with the beard. Woo, he's got some thick legs. Oh my god, that's going for what is that? $22. Actually, this is one of the few cases. The the Mega Drive slash Genesis, one of the few cases where Japanese games will often be more expensive than their foreign counterparts. I think Golden Axe 2 in Japan is like a $25 game. So not like that much more expensive, but especially for the rare stuff. When you're thinking like Maximum Carnage is like a $5,000 game now, whereas it's like, what, $30, $40 in the U.S. and, and the U.K.? Here we got Worms going for the original. Is this the original Worms? Wow, going for... $23, $24. Most original title of 1996. And New York. Ooh, does this take does this take top prize for most expensive game that we've seen? A 60-pound NES game. That's $80. New York. Action in New York. 80 bucks. Is it just rare? I'm guessing. Oh yes! Oh, here we go. So they've got it in. Um, they've got different sections for all of their retro games. Remember the Wii is retro now. They've got that. Camp, that. Oh, Animal Crossing. Let's go to the city. That's going for forty dollars. We've got Zumba going for like ten pounds. Wow, the HDMI converter. This is. You know, I've heard different stories with the HDMI converters. I've heard. I've heard it's passable. I'm. I. I would not play a Wii. On an HDTV unless you've got the component cables though the the RGB cables for the Wii are not that expensive I remember buying them new years ago for like $25 and I think you can find them used for even cheaper I would much rather use those to connect my game my Wii to a HDTV these days rather than using an HDMI converter but it's it's gonna be a simple solution whether or not it's going to work I think is gonna depend on your television and then, yeah, we saw it before, but we've got the Zumba Fitness for $13. <laughs> and then these these Wii's, I cannot believe that Wii's are $100 now. I actually saw this in the U.S. I've seen them go for like 80 or 90 bucks. So $100 is not terrible, especially considering, you know, the difference in tax between the U.K. and the United States. But $100 for Wii, I never thought I would have seen the day. I thought maybe it's because of the weirdness of 2020 that these things have gone up in price, but... The Wii being hundred dollars really shocking to me, because there there there's tons of them. They're all over the place. They're not hard to find. And then the, the Super Nintendo Classic Mini going for a hundred dollars. Look at how many they've got like three of them. I mean it's a great deal. Like you get some like twenty amazing games for the Super Nintendo. And then ooh that beautiful that is I love the translucent pink VMU that I have for the Dreamcast. But this red one, oh, I love clear red plastics. And for 13 bucks, that's not a bad price. And then the transfer pack going for five pounds, like six, seven dollars. How much is the Wii U? Yeah, how is the Wii U only like 60 more dollars than the original Wii? And also, the Wii U native HDMI out and it's backwards compatible with Wii games. I would much rather, honestly, if I was choosing, if I was at this store again and I had to choose between 75 pounds for the Wii or 110 pounds, you know, $130, $140 for the Wii U, I'm going for the Wii U. That's what, that's what I'm getting. Amazing system and it's backwards compatible. And if you hack it, by the way, can also play GameCube games. You can play three systems on the Wii U. And it's cheap. What is this? The eye camera. Yeah, remember when the eye camera was a thing? That's going for $6. And then, ooh, beautiful translucent black. Is that an original PlayStation controller? Oh, I should have got that. I would have loved to have had a translucent black PlayStation controller. It doesn't have the DualShock on it, though. And then, oh, wow, that's... Whoa, 260 bucks for a Majora's Mask 3DS? Wow, okay. I'm lucky. I actually, this is the 3DS that I have. I bought it because Majora's Mask is the best game of all time. And of course, I was going to have the Majora's Mask branded 
3DS. I'm glad I bought it when I did because I would not... 260 bucks now. I think I bought it like $200 new. I'm really surprised to see it to go for $260. A couple of other ones. And then in comparison, look at it. So just by the virtue of it being the Majora's Mask 3DS, I guess it probably has the game on it. So maybe that's a couple of extra bucks. But it is twice ex as expensive as a... As the same, or is, well, because, oh, oh, maybe it's because it's the new 3DS. Because we've got a basic 3D, fat 3DS in the middle there, the white one going for $130. Maybe it's the branding plus being a new 3DS that makes it that much more expensive. I'm not sure. Then we've got a couple of other 3DSs there on the right going for about $100 a pop. And then at the final, <laughs> yeah, I just stitched this together. We're looking at some of these. Oh, yes, the Fat DS. I am looking. My prized Holy Grail DS is the Black and Red Tank DS, which I'm calling it the Tank DS because it is the Fat DS that is just a monster of a system. And I'm looking for the Red and the Black one. And this is going, this silver one here is going for $60. Well, it's 55, 55, you know, it's a, what, it's a hundred, it's a dollar 30 to the pound last time I checked. And that's actually, I cannot believe it's going for more than the DSi. Like that, D, like I love the DSi, I actually have a black one myself. And, and then the DS Lite, because for the life of me, actually in Japan, the DS Lite is actually very coveted because of its form factor and its backwards compatibility with Game Boy Advance games. They're actually apparently, they become hard to find in the United, in, or not in the United States, but in Japan. And so seeing them here going for about 60 bucks, like that's a deal. Considering that the Game Boy Advance SP, like look at that. Is that the tribal? That better not be the tribal Game Boy Advance SP. If I see another one of those in the UK, I'm going to freak. But here we've got $60, $60 for the Game Boy Advance SP. And this is the 001. It's not the 101, by the way. So the backlight on the, the, the 001s are fine. You're going to be able to play your games no problem. I play my games on a 001. The AGS 101s are, boy, those, go, those boys command a high price. And honestly, if you want to save some bucks, like look at that. A DS Lite that is going to be able to play DS games as well as Game Boy Advance games for £10 cheaper, for $13 cheaper... Honestly, I would go with the DS Lite. If you're starting from scratch, if you don't have a Game Boy Advance already and you don't have a DS, go with the Lite. That is going to be the or, yeah, the DS Lite. That is the system that you're going to want to want. And then the Vita over there on the far right, going for 95 pounds. It's about 120 dollars. I think. Oh man, and look at. Is that dirt on the label on that plastic? holder or is that on the system itself i would certainly hope it's not on the system itself but that you know the game boy advance sps despite being clamshells they've actually suffered a lot of damage <laughs> and it, it doesn't actually no i think the tribal pattern actually would be on the face of the system not just on the outer shell of the system so if finding a finding a just a basic silver game boy advance sp is not not a terrible find finding it for $60. And actually, looking at the screen doesn't look terribly scratched up when I look at it. So, you know, yeah, even even the original DS, I think I would just go with the original DS if I had if I was just going if I was just coming from nothing. We've seen a lot of cool things. I'm actually shocked at the number of games that we were able to see for all of the different systems. I would have loved to have seen maybe some more N64 games, but seeing the original nes games that we did and like an 80 dollar nes game in the uk that is baffling to me i would love i need to research what action in new york really interesting game would love to find out more about it so this has been the kex in hereford in the united kingdom in england not wales in england there in the, the, the midlands i believe it's called I'm not actually sure of all of the geographic names of the regions in the United Kingdom, so you'll have to excuse me as the ignorant foreigner. But I had a great time going there. I had a great time showing you the retro games that they have there at the Kex. I've been your man out of Japan, Jay Contra. Thanks for watching, and mahalo. If you'd like to see exclusive Japanese game collecting videos and have access to polls that help decide the future of the channel, you can head over to patreon.com slash jcontra.